Hello, everyone, and welcome to the New Jersey Association for College Admission Counseling's Virtual College Fair. I'd like to thank you all for joining us this evening. Just a few housekeeping items before we get started. There is a Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen, which you can use to interact and ask questions to our presenters at any time. If you do have questions for a specific college, be sure to mention that college within your question. And as the presentation is being recorded, it will also be available within about a week at the same site where you're registered and your microphone and camera are turned off as well, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. Now, without further ado, I'd like to turn over to our first institution, which is Pennsylvania College of Technology. Thank you everyone for joining me tonight. I really appreciate it. My name is Bryce Winder and I'm one of the admissions counselors here at Pennsylvania College of Technology. So just a little bit about us. We are about a medium sized school. We have about 5,000 students here and we're located in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, which is home to the Little League World Series. Um, so before we really dive into some content about the school, I wanna show everyone a video just to set the scene of who we are and what we do here at Penn College. Any college can make you look good on paper. At Penn College, we're more into looking good on steel. And looking good on x-rays, with looking good in code. With extra miles taken on airstrips and suspension bridges. Building and rebuilding. Vision and revisions. With perfect stitches and smiles. With making something that already looks good, look even better. We look amazing on a plane even if it's only for a minute. And when it's time to rest, we'll build a robot who can look good for us. And when it's all said and done and made and seen, you'll look good to everyone. Because the past might be written on paper, but the future will be made by hand. So here at Pennsylvania College of Technology, we have over 100 different diverse majors that we offer students. Now, one of the big perks of going to a school like Pennsylvania College of Technology is that we have a 98% graduate placement rate, meaning that our students are graduating from this school and they're getting amazing jobs afterwards, which is really cool. Now, uh, one of the big ways that we teach our students here at the college is through our 150 plus learning labs. So typically for every one hour of lecture time, you're gonna get about three hours of lab time. Uh, which is pretty cool. And then we have an average class size of about 16 students. So that means you're going to get that one-on-one -on -one time with your professors and with your faculty here at the college. So like I said, we have over 100 different programs here at Pennsylvania College of Technology and they are split into three different academic schools. So first we have our School of Business, Arts and Sciences. So some of the programs you're gonna find in here are our culinary program, our baking program, all of our business programs, our human services and restorative justice program, as well as our graphic design program, just to name a few. Now, the second college that we have is our College of Engineering Technology. So this academic school has over 65 different programs, uh, ranging anywhere from architecture to automotive to construction, just to name a few for you. And then finally, we have our College of Nursing and Health Sciences. So some of the programs that we have in here are all of our nursing programs, our dental hygiene program, as well as our physician assistant uh, program as well. And like I said, there's over 100 different programs here at the college, so definitely check out online to see all that we offer. Student life here in Williamsport, we have a full-fledged campus. Uh, we have brand new student housing, which is really nice. We have single rooms available to our students, double rooms available, as well as apartment styles as well. Uh, we have tons of different clubs and organizations, over 65 of them here at the college, and that is ever growing. Uh, in addition to that, we have uh, D3 athletics here at the college, as well as intramural sports as well, if you're interested in that. And of course, we have all sorts of activities that are always going on with our Office of Student engagement, uh, which is pretty cool as well. Now, uh, obviously, if you're here, you're from New Jersey, so you may not be familiar with the Williamsport area and what we have to offer. So just some things that you can do 
We have the Community Arts Center that's located right downtown. It's actually where we hold commencement each year. So they'll get Broadway shows there. They'll get different comedians and concerts that'll come there as well. Uh, of course, there you can see a picture of the Little League World Series, which is always going on right when students move into uh, campus, which is pretty cool. Uh, we have a lot of great uh, local nature and hiking trails, as well as awesome shops and restaurants. And uh, I think my favorite thing about the college is our distance to a lot of major metropolitan areas. We're only a couple hours away from Baltimore, DC, New York, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, just to name a few for you. We've also had a ton of great alumni success. We have an alumni network of over 65,000 students. So we have students working anywhere from Google Pixel to FC Dallas, Amazon Robotics. We've had students in the past who work with John Deere, Tesla, and we've even had somebody that's won the Food Network show CHOP. So that's pretty cool. And, and we love talking about our alumni and our current students because they're really the reason we're here and they are doing just amazing things out there. Now, if you're a senior, you can definitely still apply to the college. We have a very simple three-step admissions process. First, you want to complete the application. Second, you want to submit your materials. And then third, you want to meet placement requirements. We are an open enrolling admission school, so you do not need SAT or ACT scores to get into the college. If you're a junior, sophomore, freshman looking to come to the school, uh, don't worry. You know, we're more than you know, happy to talk with you and uh, show you what Penn College has to offer. We also have in-person visit opportunities. We're very lucky to uh, be in person here. We've been in person in the fall and in the spring. Um, so if you're interested in coming to the school, you can go to our visit page. You can schedule a self-scheduled personal tour as well as our general campus tour. And we even have um, Saturday tours, which are coming back soon, which is very exciting for us. And then finally, here's my contact information. Once again, my name is Bryce Wonder. I'm one of the admissions counselors here at the college, specifically the one that you'd be working with if you decided to come here. Feel free to shoot me an email, text me, call me, um, you know, or schedule an appointment with me as well, or put a, a, a question in the chat and I'll chat you up. Thank you. Thank you very much for that presentation. Up next, we have Tallahassee Community College. Thanks, Clarissa. I appreciate the introduction. I'm sorry for the different lighting. We're expecting here in Tallahassee some violent weather any minute now. I'm going to go ahead and share the screen and talk to you about the uh, experiences at Tallahassee Community College in Tallahassee, Florida, which is the uh, state capital currently of the uh, third largest state in the union. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start the slideshow. Thanks for waiting. All right, TCC is, of course, although we are community college by trade, we do offer uh, several four year programs as other Florida colleges do, including nursing. We are named one of the top 10 community colleges in the country currently, and we are waiting in April, the big decision. Uh, the Aspen Prize is like the Oscars for community colleges, and the Aspen finalists are decided based on the four tenets of teaching and learning, certificate and degree completion, workforce success equitable outcomes also for those students that are underserved, uh, those that are undocumented and from low incomes. Some of the benefits of attending Tallahassee Community College is its affordability. Uh, the state of Florida has uh, mandated uh, certain, uh, you know, financial packages and the requirements for all colleges, whether two or four year colleges to uh, ensure that students of all backgrounds, whether they're in Florida, outside of Florida, anywhere in the country or international to be able to afford uh, coming to TCC. We have an open admissions policy, much smaller class sizes. I'm actually a professor standing in for our recruiting uh, team. Uh, I'm Professor Hurd and I teach mathematics, I teach college success and I teach leadership in addition to being an advisor for several clubs and the honor societies on campus. We do have that personalized attention is probably evidence uh, by me uh, here with you during our spring break here at TCC. I'd rather be with you all um, and happy to do so. We always respect our students that are coming from New Jersey. We have two year uh, career specific degrees. You can either get your AA or your AS. We have a very extensive medical offering. We have professional certifications. And what I really want to enhance here is our uh, ability to transfer to two very established colleges in our city. Uh, the state's articulation or transfer agreement um, plans here are unmatched anywhere in the country and that you have uh, a guarantee when you graduate from a two-year Florida school, you're a guaranteed admission to a four-year public Florida college. Now, it may not be the, the program you want, 
but with the majors changing all the time, we're encouraging students to uh, dual major. We are the primary gateway for the TCC to FSU program. Uh, we are the number one transfer school to FSU and tuition is, is not, not too bad here by, by going the two year route before you end up at FSU. In addition, we have the TCC to FAMU program. FAMU is one of our nation's top uh, HBCs in the country. Uh, we're blessed in that we have over 100,000 uh, students here in the Talley metro area attending the three colleges, in addition to usually about 50,000 legislators and lobbyists. But we have uh, tuition at TCC is again, half the cost of tuition going through a state university. Remember, we are here for you. We have resources that you need to make sure and ensure that you are successful as a student. We have uh, both on campus and virtual resources. And I'll talk to you about the modalities in just a minute. We have academic tutoring and our uh, award-winning learning commons, one of the top in the state. We have mental health counseling, we have the talent market. We're big in career planning. We're able to help you either virtually or in person. Uh, and it, it, modalities will be shifting, excuse me, as we progress through the uh, conditions of the pandemic. Whatever support you need, we're here to help you graduate. We even have an honors lounge for our honors college labs, and we're one of the top schools, not only in Florida, but in the nation, who support our military students. In addition, we were just named, we're in a, uh, I know a lot of us uh, go to school to study, but we want to ensure, we want to uh, make sure that you have that full well-rounded experience. All right, we were na just named the Engaged Campus of the Year for the state of Florida for all colleges. We have over 30 clubs and organizations. What I wanted to enhance is that we are uh, currently offering classes in four different modalities. We have the on-campus face-to-face class classes that are adhering to all CDC protocols in state of Florida and Leon County protocols. Leon County is currently a uh, mask required, not only in indoor campuses, but any area that's covered. We also have TCC Live, where you're interactively in a virtual environment and you are meeting synchronous, synchronously with your professors at a certain given time. We offer modality three, which is the TCC online, which is your self-paced online, a modality that's been in effect before the pandemic. Uh, and then of course we have hybrid classes, which may have a combination of the online and face-to-face. -face. And the benefits of uh, continuing the TCC Live modality too, is that uh, you can still stay in New Jersey if you're needing to, to be with family members, or you're not feeling comfortable about taking classes and coming down to Florida just yet. Um, that modality, we just found out from our VP and Provost late Friday, that that will be offered for summer classes where registration starts the week after our spring break, next uh, next a week from Thursday. And we'll also have it in the fall for sure. And I'm really seeing that the uh, nod that we're going to have that modality offered in spring of 2022. As far as your finances and costs, we award, first of all, your financial aid in the blue left banner. We award over 30 million in scholarships and grants yearly, and that number is increasing. Our average financial aid package is at least 5,600. So, and, and of course, more money is handed out if you're part of uh, certain protected classes or special populations. Our average out of cost or out of state, excuse me, cost is approximately uh, 388 per credit hour. And that usually falls in line with uh, out-of-state uh, costs for other programs and is actually a lot less than, than many states in the US. Our tuition is less than half the price of a university tuition, especially even in the state of Florida. And of course, excuse me, you want to ensure that you apply for scholarships. You can go to our main website at uh, tccfl.edu. Our admissions counselor is Miss Jenny Helms. She is from Illinois and I believe in Illinois on, on holidays for the spring break. I actually moved here from Illinois myself. I'm a licensed teacher in Illinois and Florida in math. And anyway, you can reach her at uh, Jenny Helms is at H-E-L-M-S-J at tccfl.edu. We'd love you to explore. You can go to go to tcc.com or tcc.fl.edu. Uh, I am Professor Hurd. You can also send a note to me and I'm checking emails literally all day, all night with a lot of backup grading to do. I'm at hurdj at tcc.fl.edu. All right, thank you. And thanks Clarissa and team for hosting us. Thank you so much for that presentation. As a reminder to our participants, if you do have questions for any of the colleges you are seeing today, definitely don't hesitate to interact with us in that Q&A. Up next, we have Texas Tech. Hi, everyone. My name is Adriana. I am an admissions counselor with uh, Texas Tech University. We are a large university in Lubbock, Texas. So um, I am far away from y'all, but I am really excited to be able to 
be here. So we'll just get right to it. Um, I am an alumni of the university as well. So from the standpoint of someone that was looking for a university experience, that's what I got. Um, Texas Tech is a large four-year university. Um, we do have, as of fall 2020, over 41,000 students on campus. Now, that does include our graduate student population as well as our undergraduate students. Um, while we are a large four-year university, we do maintain a very small 20 to 1 te student to teacher ratio. Um, and that will also include a majority of your first and second year classes. Um, you will have quite a few classes of your introductory courses, maybe your biologies, that will be pretty large, a few hundred students, but the benefit of having such a large university is we're able to break those groups into discussion sections once, once a week. Those are capped off at about 25. We are tier one research university. What that means is even if you aren't interested in research, we have the opportunity to participate in research, um, assist on research projects from faculty members and things like that, not only for the benefit of experience, but for the opportunity of learning about maybe you do like this opportunity. Uh, maybe research isn't just geared towards the STEM field. And that's something we really like to brag on at Texas Tech. Um, that tier one research university um, is only awarded to um, various universities every few years. So that's a pretty prestigious award. Um, as you can tell, our um, average SAT score for admitted students in fall 2019 was an 1171. For fall 2020, it was a little bit different because we weigh or um, it was uh, about 1291 this year and 2022 class. Um, we'll talk about the test optional options. Um, so for those of y'all that are, have never been to Texas, this is where we're situated in that star. We are a, about a um, five, Lovett, Texas is about five hours from Dallas um, and about six hours from the most western point in El Paso. So um, it is a pretty large, a pretty draw, long drive if you're heading out either of those ways, but most of our students will come from more than 300 miles away. So this will include students from out of state or the areas surrounding the Lubbock area. Um, we have students from multiple countries throughout the world as well. So a very large and diverse student population. There's plenty of things to do in the Lubbock area. We feature 75 um, parks and venues just in, within driving distance um, and the largest, um, second largest natural canyon called Palo Duro Canyon is just an hour drive north of us. Um, and that's something that people from all over the nation do come to bike, trail, hike, and all of those good things. Uh, Lubbock Texas is a great city for live entertainment as well. Um, I don't know if anybody is familiar with Buddy Holly or any type of um, country music one way or another. They have come through Lubbock um, for, for, for performance uh, reasons. Um, so going back to the university, we feature 10 academic colleges, which house over 150 academic programs or majors. So um, from engineering to Bachelor of Fine Arts, we have it. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Um, the university campus also does feature our School of Law in a comprehensive medical um, program and building called the Health Sciences Center. Um, this fall, we are also opening the doors in about two hours north of us in Amarillo, Texas, um, the only the second veterinary school of medicine in the state of Texas and ninth in the US. So we're really excited to have them join the Texas Tech uh, family. So, you know, definitely be on the lookout for that if you're interested in any type of veterinary medical programs. So the fun stuff, students are really interested in what kind of organizations are available for me, over 550 for you. Um, you'll live on our one, uh, one of the 19 residence halls your first year, have over 30 plus dining venues to choose from, and you'll get pretty much uh, student, section oh, student section tickets for every home game. We are a D1 um, school, Division I school in the Big 12 Athletic Conference. So you definitely will be hearing some loud crowds and lots of cheering, hope you all know March Madness starts soon. We're really looking forward to another great year. Um, in terms of what do you need to apply, if you are a senior right now, the application is still open on Apply Texas or the Common App. You must be more familiar with the Common App. Um, we'll, we're, we'll ask for an application fee and high school transcripts, but the test scores, the ACT and SAT um, test scores are optional for um, the fall of 2021 and 2022. So that's for my juniors and seniors right now. Juniors, your application won't open until July 1st of the summer, but stay tuned. We do usually host virtual application workshops. 
um, we are one of these schools that feature a top 10% um, assured admission for incoming freshmen in the state of Texas. Most Texas schools will have the same type of rule. Um, alongside that, if you are in the first, second, or third quartile of your class, you can be automatic, automatically admitted with one or the other test score. So for my out-of-state students like yourself, you will see that your tuition and fees are at the top right-hand corner and room and board. That's quite a difference from our in-state tuition on the farthest left column. And what I wanna highlight here in the bottom is actually already highlighted, um, non-resident student, non-resident students qualify for in-state tuition with a minimum of $1,000 scholarship from TTU. Easiest way to get that $1,000 scholarship is by qualifying for a presidential merit scholarship. All you need to do is get admitted to the university and fall under one of these rankings with an, um, an associated test score. And what that'll do is once you are fully admitted, you'll be offered a presidential merit scholarship. Um, that's something that's renewable for all four years and will get you that in-state tuition amount on top of that. Um, so wrapping this up, this is my information. If y'all have any questions for me, I am specifically the admissions counselor for the New Jersey area. I'd love to sit down with you and at a virtual student appointment if you have any specific questions or else feel free to shoot me an email or give me a call. Thank y'all so much. Thank you so much for giving us that wonderful presentation. Up next, we have the Clarkson School. All right, great, thank you. Uh, my name is Matthew Rutherford and I am the Director of Admission and Financial Aid for the Clarkson School. Thank you for uh, really taking a few minutes out of your evening to join us all and learn a little bit more about each of our programs. Uh, Clarkson School is a little bit different in the sense that we are actually an early college program at Clarkson University. So uh, we're actually the second oldest early college program uh, 1978 we were founded, so a little over 40 years old now. And in a nutshell, we basically offer the opportunity for uh, juniors, typically in high school, sometimes sophomores, but most of the time juniors in high school to replace what would be their senior year with their first year of college here at Clarkson. So essentially, instead of going back for your senior year of high school, you are coming to Clarkson and taking your first uh, first year of college. So why, why would you want to do that? Well, as you can imagine, there are a number of different reasons. Um, but, you know, the overarching is you just maybe find that you're ready for college a little bit earlier than than some of your peers. Uh, maybe you're looking to avoid a potentially stagnant senior year of high school. Uh, you want an academic challenge that really at the university level, obviously much different than what you're probably gonna find in another year of high school. Um, perhaps you're kind of done with what you see every day in the school and in the hallways and you're ready for a different peer group. Maybe you wanna be surrounded by more focus, maybe a bit more driven students, um, or perhaps you're just looking to gain an advantage in maybe a, a really competitive uh, university admission pool. Just because you come to the Clarkson School, doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to stay at Clarkson for the remaining three years. You, you could certainly move on and we would actually assist you with that. But on average, while you're here with us, you would, uh, you're going to take about 32 to 35 college credits. So again, a full freshman year, shoulder to shoulder with all the other Clarkson University students. So there are no high school classes. There are no watered down classes. They are the same exact classes as anyone would be taking here at the university. You're essentially just doing it a year early. Uh, you have access to all the same research, all the same off-campus and on-campus experiences, all the team-based projects, even our Division Three athletics. If you wanna play sports, you can certainly do that as well. Uh, the residential setting is really what starts to separate our students from all the other university students, of course. And, it, logically, you're a little bit younger. So of course, you do have a separate residence hall. We actually just renovated our residence halls last summer. Uh, and it's a pretty nice setup. It's actually, it would be you and your roommate and you would have your own private bathroom. Um, so as opposed to maybe what you typically find in a freshman year where you're sharing a larger bathroom with a number of students on one wing, uh, you actually have your own bathroom, you and your roommate. So 
Uh, we do have curfews, we have quiet hours, we have leave forms. Um, again, a little bit different because um, you, know, you are a little bit younger. So there is a more of a checks and balances system during the, uh, particularly during that first semester. A lot of, um, you know, some of these things are done in more of a transitional way. So we're really trying to really acclimate you to the university and to the, this kind of setting, understanding what the expectations are. And then we lift a number of these things going into that spring semester. We do have house advisors and mentors on all of our floors as well. Uh, and they're typically former Clarkson School students. So you have the ability to talk to them and to really kind of pick their brain and see what it was like for them in the program and maybe maybe even to get some pointers as to how you might wanna proceed through the year. The academic support is again, another layer that we offer that you typically don't necessarily find maybe in a first year university setting. You have your own advisor, uh, Brenda Kojan. Uh, she's been here about 20 to 25 years and she works with you from beginning to end. So putting your classes together, going through this, this coming summer, any classes you might need to obtain the high school diploma, as well as whatever classes you might need and you might want to pursue here with us, where your passions are, and she'll work with you through all of that. We do have tutoring built right into our program as well. And as I said, it is a more transitional environment. So, um, you know, aside from maybe the curfews and quiet hours and things like that, we also have personal enrichment programs and professional development programs to really you know, help you gain that skill set or to even hone that skill set that you've already started to build uh, you know, going through your, your high school career. And how can we put you on the best path going forward, whether that of course is here at Clarkson for your sophomore year or going on to another school. If you are looking at going on to another school, the application support is again, another layer while you are here where we do college workshops, we do resume building, if you're looking for recommendations for maybe the professors you might be working with on campus, uh, essay writing and mock interviews, we do all of that with you very, very early in the year so that you're putting your best foot forward when you are applying to some of these schools that you might be interested in. Uh, the high school diploma uh, requires, of course, a larger conversation, but just know that if you are interested in getting the diploma, you know, there are some different options to be able to do so. You can either come in with the diploma or of course we will work with you to obtain it while you are here. Uh, cost is the same as any other university student because you're a fully matriculated first year student, but you are eligible for all the same scholarships. Uh, we have a full tuition scholarship available and anyone who's accepted into our program will receive at least $30,000 in their financial aid package. Uh, once you are done at the Clarkson School, you can either, like I said, come back for your sophomore year, which is about historically 50% of our students have done, or you can move on to some other schools. And obviously I won't read down through here, but just a list of some of the schools our students have gone on to, obviously a, a fairly impressive list. And here's my contact information. I'll put that in the chat as well. Thank you again so much for joining us. Have a great evening. Thanks, Carissa. Thank you for that presentation. As a reminder to our participants, if you do have questions, definitely don't hesitate to put those into that Q&A. We're definitely happy to answer those. Up next, we have the College of New Jersey. Hi, good evening, everybody. My name is Brian Sotay. I'm the Assistant Director of Transfers here at the College of New Jersey. And don't panic. I know I said transfers, but I'm here to give you the lowdown on everything TCNJ that you need to know. So get started here with this presentation. Uh, so first thing foremost, Looks like we're the only New Jersey school in this cluster here tonight. So appreciate uh, you joining us this afternoon. Uh, so we are the college or this evening rather, we are the College of New Jersey. We're located in Ewing, New Jersey. So we're about 10 minutes north of, Trent, of Trenton. Um, we're about 30 minutes away from Pennsylvania, about an hour away from Manhattan. Uh, so you could kind of get the idea there. We're located right in the Southwestern corner uh, of central New Jersey. So a lot of directions there, but the central New Jersey group and the unicorns in the, in the, in the room here tonight know what I'm talking about. Um, so we are pretty well known within the state of New Jersey. Uh, we kind of are the Goldilocks of what you might be looking for. So we're not too large, we're not too small, 
we're kind of that feel of a private college, but a public university uh, in, in terms of itself. So a college, not a university, uh, but we're looking for all of those right things that you could possibly imagine and get your ideas around in terms of what you're looking for. So we're about 7,000 students on campus, a small closed knit campus, which is about 1.8 miles around in a circular fashion if you were looking at us from the top down, two entrances on campus, two entrances off campus. Um, so you really can kind of see how close knit our universe or our college is. When you go on campus, uh, pretty much everything to the left hand side of our building Trenton Hall, which is kind of the welcome center for everybody is where our office is for the admissions office, everything out, outside the Trenton Hall to the left is all of our academic buildings, everything to the right of that is more of our extracurricular uh, buildings and everything else in between. So you really are on one side of the campus for all of your academic studies and then all of your extracurricular studies on the right hand side of campus. So like I said, we're about 7,000 students uh, on campus taking classes. Currently with the COVID era, we have about 2,100 students living on campus as well. Um, and we're hoping that things can continue to, to go forward in the right direction uh, with COVID and masking and, and vaccines moving forward that we're all welcome back on campus moving forward as we are all optimistic of that where we are now. So we're a small close knit class size. So about 21 students per class, the average student to faculty ratio is 13 to one. Uh, this is kind of what we were founded on. Some of the bread and butter of what we were established way back when in the 1800s, uh, before any of us were even thought of uh, on, on how to pursue education moving forward. Um, so the small close knit class sizes, uh, being able to continue moving forward, even in the COVID world of what we're living in now, those online courses or those remote virtual courses are still being controlled in terms of how many students are able to go into those classes. So you will see those small close knit classes as you continue to move through the population. Additionally, um, we don't have large lecture halls. So the largest classroom that you'll see on campus holds probably about 30 to 40 students. So you won't see rows and rows of lecture halls um, and sit in some of those courses. We don't actually have uh, the, 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 um, the mentality to um, do a lecture hall style presentation. So we have lecture based courses in terms of the professor is speaking to you similar to what we're doing right now. Uh, and then uh, ex experimental based courses as well. So a blend of those two, but not a large lecture style uh, campus um, that you would see in movies and, and depicted of what you might think of uh, in terms of college. So we have 94% of students returning for sophomore year, which means that the students you come in with, that kind of whole cliche of look to your left, look to your right kind of mentality is not offered here at TCNJ. Most of the time is look to your left, look to your right. Those people will more than likely be sitting next to you at graduation. So being able to come into a program here at TCNJ and work through it with not only your professors to see you grow from freshman year to when you graduate, uh, but also having your friends join you moving forward as you continue moving as well. We have seven different schools here at the, the College of New Jersey. So everything from the School of Arts and Communications to the School of Education, which is what we were founded on way back in the 1800s. So we were the New Jersey Normal School. Uh, we were developing students to become teachers moving forward. So if you are looking to become a teacher, whether it's in the state of New Jersey or elsewhere, uh, we are doing very well in terms of making sure that students are taking those practice exams at a 99% passing rate and getting those jobs within the state of New Jersey. There's currently not one district within the state of New Jersey that does not have a TCNJ alum in it as well. So it was kind of our bread and butter. We have expanded from there. Um, and like I said, everything from arts and communications to the School of Nursing, which has become very, very popular as well in the School of Sciences. So we have over 50 different majors and then some even moving forward. I kind of use this slide as like the Sonic of everything. So there's a bunch of different options to drink at Sonic. You could create different slushies and stuff. It's kind of a similar idea here at TCNJ. A lot of the majors that you're looking at are mix and match and you could add those as dual majors, major minors and continue moving forward from there. So if you have a real big interest in a couple of different opportunities working with your academic advisor to make sure that those two blend together is certainly something that can be done. Now there are limitations to that, but a lot of that is up to a student's will of, of what they're interested in doing and having those conversations moving forward with, with their advisors. Um, so we really do encourage the student to get involved, really kind of attack what they want to do. Um, and also when you're admitted to TCNJ, you're admitted to the program of your choice. So you don't have to reapply later. Um, you're admitted to the School of Education, Early Childhood Education uh, moving forward or whatever other program that you're applying for as well. 
for incoming first year students, we also have an undeclared and a self design major for you. If you're interested in choosing a variety of those options, um, you can certainly pursue that moving forward as well. But as you can see, there's a ton of different majors that we offer here at TCNJ that you could certainly get involved in. And we'd be speaking about all these different majors for hours upon hours if we were to go in through all of them at the same time. So right now uh, we have a couple different options in terms of what you need to submit. We are test optional, so you do not have to submit your test scores moving forward. Um, I'm gonna place my uh, contact information in the chat box as well, but know that those of you who are seniors right now, you still have until April 15th to submit your application. Uh, additionally, if you are a junior or sophomore, your applications will open up on the Coalition app or the Common app uh, April 1st, and those are the deadlines in front of you. So certainly take a screenshot of that as you, as you uh, have that chance or view the recording later. Um, and we will be in touch. Clarissa, thank you so much for having us this evening. I'll throw our contact information in the chat box. Thank you very much for that presentation. Our final institution for this session is the SUNY College of Environmental Science and Forestry. Thank you very much uh, for the kind introduction. And thank you everyone for joining us this evening. I'm uh, the last one to go. So thank you for being this patient. Um, SUNY ESF is actually a very unique university in that we specialize in the study of the environment and applications of science and math within the environment. Um, so my name is Sean Corbis, my email SM Corbis at esf.edu. Feel free to contact me with any questions, uh, but let's get started. So ESF is the premier institution in the United States for the study of the science, design, engineering, policy, communication, and management of natural resources in the environment. So uh, as you might be able to see from the little logo up there, ESF has actually been studying the environment for over a hundred years. And that really speaks to the testament of the work that our students have done historically and are still doing. And uh, you know, as we approach an ever increasing climate crisis. So our main campus is located in Syracuse, New York. We're actually right next to Syracuse University. If you can see in the middle picture below, uh, that's our green roof on our student center, the Gateway Center, and right in the background is the Carrier Dome where Syracuse University plays their Division I athletics. Um, we have a relationship with Syracuse and I'll talk a little bit about that a little later on. We also have a separate Ranger School campus for our students that are interested in a very hands-on technical learning experience. At the Ranger School, we offer three AAS degrees or Associates of Applied Science, and they're designed to be the most technical learning experience a student can have. Uh, and in total, aside from the Ranger School campus, which is about 2,800 acres, the college actually owns 25,000 acres of land across the state and all of our students get to experience these campuses in some capacity. Academics at ESF, as I had mentioned, really follow those core themes that were mentioned in that statement. So as far as like our science programs, you can kind of break them into two different categories as, as far as field-based science programs and research-based science programs. A good example of a field-based science program that we offer one that's not listed here, as you can see, is like our conservation biology program, a very popular program core in, in studying life and the diversity of life and, and how we can conserve it moving forward. Uh, a good example of a research-based program would be like our chemistry program or environmental science. These programs are gonna be more designed for students to have higher applications of math and science in resource development in our environments. The design category is filled by one of our majors on our, on our campus, landscape architecture. And landscape architecture has a lot to do with everything from urban design to literally we have alumni that designed the trail system at Acadia National Park. As far as engineering programs, uh, we have a really, really good engineering program in environmental resources engineering and two really good chemical engineering programs in paper and bioprocess engineering. So if you're a student that would like to really apply chemistry on an industrial level for, you know, example, development of renewable materials, things like that, those programs would be great for you. If you're a student that might be interested in civil engineering, environmental resources engineering is gonna be the perfect program for you 
because it really combines a civil engineering program with an environmental science program. As far as policy and communications, those are taken care of by our environmental studies and environmental and education and interpretation majors. Even within our environmental studies program, we have a pre-law track as well as a pre-professional advising track as well. Our management majors round out the categories of study at ESF, and they're in everything from construction and sustainable energy, as you can see, to something like forest resources management for students who might be interested in you know, working for the US Forest Service, being a manager of a forest plot and, and things like that, or harvesting uh, timber from, from forests. We even have a working forest that's part of our properties that we own in the Adirondacks that our forestry students get to participate in and harvest lumber in. Outside of academics, there's a number of things to do as far as student life is concerned. So really, uh, between ESF alone and our relationship with our sister university next door, Syracuse University, you have over 300 different clubs and organizations you can join, as, as well as really the, the relationship at SU boils down to you can't major in something at SU and you cannot play a Division I sport. Other than that, every SUNY ESF student starting their freshman year is prorated 16 credits already calculated into your tuition that you could use over your four years at Syracuse University. Another really cool thing is just the Syracuse area in general. Central New York is very beautiful in terms of the recreational opportunities that we have. There's a lot of uh, fresh water bodies available, a lot of good hiking trails, um, and the uh, Ithaca Gorges are actually a, a short drive away too, uh, which are pretty famous in upstate New York. And then, like I said, the whole relationship with SU, you know, our clubs are, are very ESF, as you might assume, you know, can pertain to everything. Like we have a wildlife society, a Bob Marshall club, which is our outing club. But then, you know, if you really wanted to get involved in like a club sport, you could play that at Syracuse University. Or if you wanted to join a fraternity or sorority, you'd be allowed to participate in those as well. Moving forward to learn more about ESF, we actually have a really great opportunity coming up, our virtual academic information sessions. They're really designed uh, by our faculty to inform our students of what's happening. Um, and so pretty much if, if you wanna learn specifically about a department at ESF, I'd highly recommend going to our website and attending one of these sessions and signing up. Um, this was a, about all I had for you guys today. I'm an alumni as well. So if you guys want the perspective that I might have had as a student, you should feel more than free to you know, reach out to me. But I, I really appreciate your time this evening and I look forward to connecting with you in the future. Thank you so much for your presentation and thank you institutions for giving us a little bit more insight to what you guys offer. I'm gonna bring back all of our panelists to answer a question for you guys to give you just a little bit more insight to their favorite things that they offer. So the question we'll be answering is, what is your favorite event or tradition on your campus? And we'll start with Pennsylvania College. I think our favorite is every homecoming, we invite our former alumni or current students as well as their families to a big bonfire on campus. So it's really fun and hopefully once COVID's over, we can get back to doing that. Tallahassee Community College. Hi there, it is probably graduation weekend because we uh, share that weekend with uh, Florida State and FAMU and people are here from all over the world. It's wonderful. Right after graduation ends, we have the State of Florida History Fair and I'm usually a judge. So it's just nonstop happy. Texas Tech. So at Texas Tech, um, right before the fall finals, kind of going into the Christmas holiday break, um, we have our entire campus community join us at what is actually our campus entrance, the seal here. Um, the entire campus entry is lit with um, 25,000 LED lights. It's just a great time to kind of sit back and soak in the past semester. Um, it's usually snowing in Lubbock that time of the year, so it's beautiful and not too cold. Um, just overall great memories as alumni as well. The Clarkson School. 
Uh, yeah, I would probably say our um, Cold Out Gold Out, which is uh, an alumni event in the winter, usually in the January, February timeframe. Uh, they, uh, there's like an outdoor hockey game. Uh, we bring a number of our former, uh, well, some of our alums back. There are former NHL players and uh, just a really great time on campus. The College of New Jersey. So I would have to say it's probably around graduation. So when students receive their diplomas from walking across the stage, we have a fountain uh, outside the School of Sciences um, that students typically uh, kind of jump in and kind of celebrate their, their achievements there. Um, in fact, when our last president was retiring, she actually jumped in the fountain as well to celebrate her achievements. So that would that'd be a pretty cool one. In SUNY ESF. I'd have to say hands down, especially as an alumni of the university, the, the best part of uh, campus gathering that ESF has is actually our Earth Week. So the week that Earth Day is, we actually have an entire week celebration of our Earth. And there's everything from, you know, tie dyeing to uh, like getting down and dirty and doing sustainable stuff like, you know, planting native species on our campus and things like that. So uh, Earth Week has, has got to be hands down a favorite of all of our ESFers. Wonderful. Well, thank you everyone for joining us this evening. When you do close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey and we would appreciate any feedback you can provide to us. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as others at the same site where you registered. Again, thank you for joining us and have a great evening.